Does it look like food to you? My name's Scott Lupian. I've been living in China for 16 years. And here, this is considered a delicacy. This year, I decided to take it upon myself to learn all I could about this little bug. It's called a cicada. This is the nymph form. And here's another species, smaller. In this video, I'll tell you what I've learned. We'll start with how to catch them, how to cook them, and yes, even how to eat them. I'll even tell you what I've learned about their natural history and a little bit more. So, for starters, how do you catch these suckers? So the first step, starting around 3rd of June, is you listen for the calls of the cicadas in the trees, the mating calls. You can hear them up here in this willow tree. Once you hear that sound, then you know they've started to come out. That's when you can start hunting. So, we have come to this elm forest to hunt cicadas. I, you can hear this buzzing sound. That is the mating call of the male cicadas. Get that cool. Big one. Make a racket. Uh, we just had a good rain the other night, two nights ago, and that usually gets them coming out. Oh, here we have a hedgehog. This one's actually pretty small. This is 
ones. They're little ones. This one's in between, and it's green. Now check it out. We've got three different species. So these big ones, so here's one that's already started its metamorphosis. Here's what it would have looked like before that. It's the big it's one. The little, little guy. And there's one, two, little one. And then you got these in-between ones that are actually green. So like here. So you got big, little, and in-between green. There. Three different species. Okay, so we went out, we caught some, and now it's time to give this thing a taste test. So, they say the best way to cook cicadas is to deep fry them. Surprise, surprise, right? Uh, I would think maybe butter and garlic would be nice, but let's go with the Chinese way. Uh, the best oil is peanut oil, and uh, we're gonna deep fry them in that. Here's our catch, and I've got the oil all nice and hot. Let's, uh, let's cook them up.
I'm going to save these up for a few days and we'll have a big feast. There's 26 of them here. Cook them. So uh, over the course of a week, we caught exactly 100 cicadas. Uh, I just finished cleaning them all. These are the real little ones. These are the green ones, the size. And then the really big. And like I said, there's 100 of them. We've got uh, 64 of the smaller two species. So we decided tonight I'm going to cook up all the small ones and uh, our friends, they'll cook the 36 big ones. So I'm going to spice it up a bit and here's what I'm going to do different. I chopped up a bunch of uh, garlic here, some ginger and some very hot little birds and peppers, Sichuan peppercorns, these are those green numbing ones. So, this concludes the bug eating portion of this program. If you just watch this to see some crazy American and China eating insects, well, you can skip the rest of this. I uh, hope you liked it. Either way, uh, hit the like button if you did. I got a lot of ideas to make more, uh, more such content. So, uh, as I said earlier on, I'm going to share with you some natural history and other things I learned about cicadas in Beijing. It's now all at the very end of July, and uh, we've been doing this for two months. There's still plenty of adults calling in the trees, but the number of nymphs emerging now at night is just too few to bother with. So, it's time to recap. I'll share with you what I've learned. So first of all, cicadas are really an amazing family of insects. Worldwide, there's over 3,000 species. They live on all continents except for Antarctica, and they find several new species every year, mainly in the tropics. Cicadas live for a very long time. Most of that time is spent underground as a nymph. Some cicadas in the northeastern U.S. come out once every 17 years. In between, you don't see any, and then all of a sudden, 
again every 17 years, boom, they come out in the millions. These are called periodical cicadas. There are two really good BBC programs on YouTube. You can check them out, done by David Attenborough, if you want to know more about those. All the other cicadas are what are called annual cicadas. They come out a couple months out of the summer, every night, more or less, especially after a rain, and they come out every single year. But nevertheless, even these uh, have a life cycle that's several years long, and they spend most of that time anywhere from a foot to even up to eight feet underground. Down there, they find the roots of the tree, and they suck the sap, and they spend most of their lives underground in the dark sucking sap. And then, when the right time comes, in the summer, usually after rain, when it's warm, soil heats up, something triggers them to emerge, and they dig to the surface, poke a hole out, and if it's daytime, they wait. They wait there at that hole until it gets dark, and then, then right when it gets dark, and usually right when it gets dark, they climb up out of that hole, go across the nearest tree, climb up it, and then anywhere from a few inches up, all the way up to even 30 feet, they will shed their skin, and out comes the, the winged adult. Now after the cicadas emerge as adults, they only live for a couple more weeks. During this time, they'll fly to the treetops, the males will make that notorious call, the females will be attracted to it, they'll mate, and then the female will lay her eggs under the green bark of a small branch. Something about like this. She'll poke holes in, into this, deposit the eggs. Now those eggs won't actually hatch until the following late spring, early summer. Drop to the ground, the little larva will dig down into the soil, the whole thing starts over again. Now you can pretty easily tell the difference between the male and the female cicada by looking at the underneath of its abdomen. The male have these two flaps called timbles, and by buckling these, they, they make this, this loud sound. The females don't have timbles, but they have something else instead, and it's, it's like an ear mechanism, and it's designed specifically to hear that sound made by the male. Each species makes a different call, and the females are attuned to the call that the male makes just of that one species. Now, I told you at the beginning that the season starts in early June. Well, in fact, this year, I heard the first cicada calling on June 1st. I just heard it briefly, a few calls, and that was it. So that night, we went out and looked, and we didn't find anything. A few days, a week later, then they really started calling. We went out again, and we found two, and they were the small variety. And I should have known this had I done my research, but uh, the fact is I tried, and, uh, and I went on Google, searched in English, and didn't find anything. However, later I used a Chinese search engine, searched in Chinese, and there's actually quite a bit of information. Uh, as you'd expect, this is China, so Chinese species. And this, uh, this small species is the first to come out. It comes out in the beginning of June, roughly. It goes for about a month, and you don't see it anymore. And that's exactly what we, we witnessed here. Uh, and uh, although it popped up everywhere, uh, including even in the yard here, uh, it was actually the least common of the three. We did have one even fly into the house. So as you probably know, the Chinese language is comprised of characters that have meaning. Most words are a compound of characters, but uh, there is one character that actually means cicada, and it's pronounced Chan in Mandarin, and it looks like this. As you might expect, none of these Chinese cicadas have a name in English. Uh, they do all have a scientific name. Uh, the name of this particular one is Platyplura camferi. In Chinese, it's known as the Hui Gu. However, I don't think most people even know that, uh, because there's a common name. And the common name is what everybody knows it by here in Beijing. That's xiao ru ru. Xiao ru ru, that's a form of onomatopoeia. Uh, xiao meaning small, it's the smallest of the three. Uh, and ru ru, hot, hot, actually uh, it's supposed to mimic the sound that the males make when calling. Ru, ru, ru. So on that night when we cooked up 100 cicadas, uh, I took 10 of each and I, I weighed them just to get some sort of an idea of what each weighed, specifically relative to the others. And so here's what we found about Xiaorura. This is a larva, and there's an adult. 
and I'm going to weigh 10 of them to get an average mass. With the... All right, 10 cicadas, 9, 10. All right, well, that's easy. They weigh one gram each. The next species to emerge was the largest. And this is also the one that's best known for its culinary qualities. These first started coming out in mid-June, uh, in fact, quite a lot, all the way up through mid-July. But after that, they really slowed down, and now beginning of August, Two nights ago I did catch one, but uh, so few it's really not worth looking for them anymore. This cicada makes the loudest call, and as you would expect given its large size, it's sort of a loud rattling buzz sound, somewhat like a power saw. You hear that up in the trees here, that loud racket. Those are the big cicadas calling. This cicada is known to science as Cryptotympana atrata. Proper Chinese name is Hei Jia Chan, which would mean black locust cicada. Uh, but most people don't call it that. In most parts of China, it's called Zhi Liao. The local name here in Beijing is Ji Miao. Typically, people talk about this in the nymph form. And to designate that, they add the character for monkey, Ho. Monkey is Ho Zi. So in this case, it would be Zhi Liao Ho or Ji Miao Ho. And so how did this cicada stack up in the weight department? There's a larva, there's an adult. Okay, I've put 10 of them in here, 51 and a half grams. So these are a little over five grams a piece. Much bigger than the others, five times as big. The third and final species to come out was the green one, sort of smallish to midsize. These didn't start showing up until late July. They're still coming out now. This was also the most numerous of the three. The scientific name is Maimuna mongolica. The proper Chinese name is Mangu Hanchan, meaning Mongolian cold cicada. But uh, most people know them by their common name, which is Futiar. You hear that one? This is the one they call the Futiar, because it sounds like Futiar, 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 Futiar. You can see what a fully developed adult looks like. Bigger than the, than the first, smaller than the, than the real big one. That is a larva, and there's an adult. Ten green ones, thirteen. So they're just a little bit bigger than the other ones. Uh, 1.3 grams versus one gram. Now, I thought I'd finished filming this three days ago, but today I'm here at the Wild Great Wall. Out here looking for snakes. And I found something I thought I'd better add. Hear that sound? When I did the, the research on cicadas in Beijing, it said there's actually over 10 species known in the area, but only four common ones. The last one to come out is this one. The common name for this one is Ming Ming Wa. And it's onomatopoeia. Let's listen for that classic Ming Ming Wa. Okay, I see a Ming Ming Wa. It's right here on this tree. Right here. Uh, oh, there it goes. Alright, I see another, another Ming Ming Wa. This is Ming Ming Wa. That's pretty big. I'll try and catch it, but I'm. Mm -mm. Oh, there it goes. Well, we thought we were done, and then today we went out to catch some snakes on the Great Wall, and sure enough, we found what we've been hoping to find, which was the fourth species of cicada, which is supposed to be common around here, but isn't. Haven't seen or heard any of them until today on the outskirts of Beijing, out in sort of the wild area, wild Great Wall. Uh, as I said, the local name is Ming Ming Wa, 
and the proper name in Chinese is Ming Ming Chan. That Ming, that character means uh, like a, designates a bird call, which kind of makes sense. This is definitely the most uh, the most musical of the four. The scientific name is Onctotampani maculaticolus. Although we didn't actually catch any of these, we saw a few, and they're actually they're pretty big. Uh, they're not as big as our, uh, the biggest one here, the Zhiliao, but close. Definitely bigger than the other two. Uh, they've got a, a white uh, white markings on their uh, on their abdomen. On the bottom side of the abdomen, half of it is white, and it's actually a powdered wax, they say. Well, anyway, it was cool that we finally got to find that fourth one here before finishing the video and uh, added that in. And this wraps it up. I really hope you enjoyed the video.